All right, in the following set of tutorials, we're going to do some compression of some videos. Now, if you locate your videos, um, I have reorganized things quite a lot. Um, we have a cars HDV file, and if you take a look at this file, this file um, is it's not beautiful, but hey, it works. Um, but it shows us some video of uh, cars moving. It's 18 seconds, and we're going to try and cut it down to just 15 seconds for when we compress things. But it's definitely got some fields going on here, and so we're going to look at removing those fields when we compress the video and, and things like that. And then also, um, it's just got a little bit of motion to it, so we'll just see. It's got a few little details, so we'll see how well it does when we compress it. Now we've got some other files in here too, an MPEG-1, um, another HDV file, this time the extension has changed to M2T, um, an AVI file, which is a DV wide file, and an MTS. And the only reason these are here are because that I want you to import them into the encoding software and just see if they import, just see if they're all recognized. So let's start off by dragging in the cars, and it does in, it come in, and this is the Adobe Media Encoder CS4 that I'm using right now. And the other ones, let's just make sure that they all come in. And it does indeed look like all the different extensions, MTS, M2T, AVI, another MTS, this is an ABC HD, so it's a different codec than the HDV codec, um, and the MPEG-1 are all recognized and brought in. So I'm going to delete all but the first one, the CARS HDV, because this is the one that we're going to compress. Now, we're going to try and compress it to four different types of files, a high-quality DVD, an MPEG-4 H.264 file, an FLV, and a WMV, and we're going to try and get the settings pretty close for all of the small files, except for the DVD file. The DVD file will be a higher quality file. So let's go ahead, um, and you know what, actually, we could make them all low quality and just see what happens, or all basically give them the same settings and and see what we get for our output. And that'd be kind of interesting too. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start off with the MPEG-2 DVD file. And this is going to be um, using a preset which is the NTSC widescreen high quality. Now if I go into this preset and click on the object, you'll see that I have my, my video here and I'm I've got my two sides kind of cut off. Now, um, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to change, make sure that this is just 15 seconds long that we're going to use. And then we're also going to crop. Um, one of the nice things I like about Adobe Media Encoder is the ability to crop. So if I crop the top 15 and the bottom 15 pixels, then when I go to my output, you'll see that it fits quite well. So that's a nice kind of thing about using um, Adobe Media Encoder is it gives you the ability to, to out, uh, crop your source and then see the output of that. And it, it's pretty easy to be able to um, crop your time to just 15 seconds as well. Anyway, let's take a look at this. Um, we are going to do some settings, change some settings here. So um, multiplexing, we're going to multiplex it as a DVD and use constant bit rate. I'm um, change my video quality. Oh, we'll change it up to five. Who knows? Um, what that really does. And I'm going to change it to CBR because I want it to be a constant bit rate. I'm going to go ahead and leave it um, at the 6 because the 6 is a um, common bit rate that you might see, or even 7. Now those are common bit rates that you might see when you are making DVDs. But I've seen this 6 a lot. No, I'll just take it up to 7 because I know that there are some there are some templates that use the 7 later. Um, the other stuff I'm not going to worry about at all. I'm not going to change anything else. The audio um, is going to stay at the PCM, which is the pulse code mod modulation that is uncompressed audio, basically, for DVD. Now, um, I'm going to duplicate this object, and I'm going to change it to the next settings. So if I look down my list, the next thing that I encounter is FLV. So I'm going to use the preset, which is the um, FLV um, widescreen source web large. And let's go to the settings here, and I'm going to change a couple things. Now, notice that the um, cropping has disappeared, and we get our output there, and you can see it's different. But we're going to fix that when we actually change our video here. Our format is going to be FLV. F4V is bas basically the H.264 version of Flash Video, but we're not going to deal with that right now. 
Um, we're going to be using the on 2 VP6, which is the predecessor of the new Google VP8 codec. And so this is kind of what the quality of Flash was for many years. Um, and we're going to compare that with the new H.264. Now we're going to change our frame size from, from 720 to 640 by 360. Change our frame rate to 30 frames a second. We're going to change this to CBR and we can keep it at um, 1500 kilobytes per second because that's what we'll be using for the other ones as well. This other stuff underneath here, I don't really know what that is, but we can do quality, we can change it up to, to change it to speed or good or best. And this will probably um, change some things about how long it takes to encode and how good the encoding results are. But I'll just leave it on code on good. Um, basically, I just want constant bit rate, one pass, 1500K. Um, that'll be 640 by 360. And that will be a good benchmark for the next one we do. So I'm going to duplicate this, change it to H.264, choose the Apple iPod Video Large, and now we're going to change the settings in here as well. So we want 640 by 360 as our size, for sure. We're using the 30 FPS, and we're going to go down here and change it from VBR to CBR. We'll change this to 1.5. Hopefully that should be 1.5, which is the same data rate as the flash video. And pretty much that's all I want to change. Audio, I'm going to leave as it is. Um, if we take a look at it, our bit rate is going to be 128. And then we're going to duplicate this one more time. We're going to change this to um, Windows Media Video. And I'm going to change my um, setting to just one of the different ones here. It doesn't even really matter which one we use right now. I'm just going to use an HDV setting because we need to change the settings anyway. So let's go inside and take a look at what we've got. Um, audiences, compressed, video. We're going to use the um, Windows Media 9 Advanced Profile. We're going to do encoding passes, constant, um, our frame rate, our frame width should be 640, and that'll be 360. Our frame rate will be 30. And notice how many different frame rates we get with this Windows Media 9 Advanced Profile. It's a pretty flexible codec for sure. Our maximum bit rate is going to be um, 1500. And our image quality, quality, let's just take it all the way up. And I think that's pretty much all that we need to do. If we check our output, it looks like it's going to be the right thing. We still have just the 15 seconds. Our audio, um, let's see, audio format, that's really crazy. Let's take this down to like 128 um, with the 44, uh, 44 kilohertz. So that's pretty common. We could even do the 48 kilohertz, but I don't think it really matters. Actually, I think that is what we want. We want the 128, 48 kilohertz, two channel, 24 bit VBR. So that's pretty much matching the same settings as we have as the other. You'll notice that we get some really high quality audio settings with this Windows Media 9 codec, our, our Windows Media files. So anyway, let's output that. And I think that's really about it. It looks like we're gonna be getting about the same quality when we encode these. So what you want to do now is click on Start Queue, and this is going to save the um, files into the same footage folder that we're currently working in. And you'll see when it starts to compress, I do want you, by the way, to keep track of how long it takes to compress each one. And you'll see that this one is taking about um, 17, 18, 19, about 20 seconds, 21 seconds. So it took 21 seconds for that, and you want to write that down for later. And here's the file that it's saving out. Now, um, you're going to notice that it's going to compress all the different files into this same folder. And um, when it is compressing some of them, like the, the DVD file there, you saw an audio file and a DVD file in a video file separate. And those are the two streams. That's the uninterleaved or um, unmultiplexed files, the two separate files that are then multiplexed together. The FLV is multiplexing it while it encodes. And we'll let it get to the H.264 um, and get 
start compressing and you'll see the two files that are there too. Now notice this one is at 21, oh it's at 47, 48, 49. So this particular codec, this FLV is taking a lot longer to compress. And I do want you to kind of keep track of how long that takes and mark that down in the document that I'm giving you so that you have a good estimate about, about each, each one and how long they take. So here's the MPEG-4 started to compress and there's the M4V, that's the MPEG-4 video, and this is the advanced audio codec file that it's saving out. That's two separate files. And then when it's done encoding it, it'll multiplex those together. So I'm going to stop my video encoding my video here, and you'll just watch the rest of the encodes, and we'll take a look at them in just a second.